Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how I made over $60,000 from a cruise ship. Yes, that is correct. Hi, my name is Kai Williams. I am part of Clover Trading here. And I genuinely wanna show you and share this with you guys because I frankly thought I wasn't gonna make much money while being on a cruise. Frankly, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to trade because the Wi-Fi wasn't that good. So I went on a Royal Caribbean cruise from March 18th to 22nd. Both these plays, Fannie Mae and S-O-U-N, happened during this time period. One was a great breakout, which was Fannie Mae. One, the other one was a great breakdown on S-O-U-N. First, let's go into FNMA. And now first, obviously being on the cruise, how on earth was I able to actually trade? First of all, I bought the Wi-Fi package. I believe it was a couple hundred bucks for the week. I had up to four devices. I connected my phone, my fiance's phone that we're now engaged, which is very exciting. Thank you guys for the congratulations there. And then also my two laptops, the one in front of me here and the one to the left of me, my Mac. So I had four devices, connected them all to Wi-Fi, and it was pretty good. I gave a webinar while I was on the Wi-Fi. I traded just fine while I was on the Wi-Fi. It worked well. The other secret was to this is that beyond just trading for the first 30 minutes to an hour of the day, you know, obviously I'm on a cruise. We took a couple pit stops. We went on a couple islands. I had to kind of take my phone with me and leave my laptop behind. The key here is that I trade on DAS Trader. This is DAS, right? This is DAS linked up to my Centerpoint account. I love DAS as a software. They also offer DAS Mobile. Okay, this is where this same brokerage account, Centerpoint, is hooked up to DAS Mobile on my phone. So when I went off onto these islands, one island had the actual same Wi-Fi that we that we were hooked up on the cruise with, which is really cool. And the other thing is I have international, you know, cell phone pass. So whenever I go to another country, I pay 10 bucks a day. I have the same kind of internet cellular service as I would if I'm in the, the United States, right? So it was covered there. So all I was going around these places, so funny, I have a picture, I, I could show it here, of literally me in a pool with a DJ blasting music of like a drink in my hand. And I've got like Das Mobile up just ready to rock and roll as I'm trading and, and partying, uh, you know, on this cruise and on this island. So it was really, really funny. I wouldn't recommend, you know, obviously having a margarita or drinking while you're trading, but I had my stops in, I had ways to protect myself. I and mean, I kind of just went with the flow, very easy going on these trades and they just ended up being really good winners, right? So without further ado, let's dive into the actual trading of it. Danny May here. You've heard me talk about this before. You've heard Dom talk about this before. There's been a video of Dom talking about on our YouTube channel. For those who've been in the Clover Room, you're probably tired of us hearing about this ticker because we've just traded so dang much but the reality is it's because it's that that is that good of a trader right we're going to keep milking it as long as it's going to you know bring bring opportunities and so in the past less than a year of this ticker it has broken out not once not twice not three times four times five times and every breakout has for the most part been successful so this ticker has a history of working out well and breaking out well and so when you have a high odds scenario or at least the past results of a ticker is not indicative of the future but when you just when you've seen a ticker move a certain way over and over and over again it's only our natural bias to want to think it's going to do that in the future now there's no guarantees it does but again when it's done it one time two times three times on the fourth time here me myself dom and huddy thought the same thing of like okay if it's done it four times it's going to do it a fifth time or if it's done it four three times it's going to do it a fourth time and so ever dreamed of trading like one of the clovers well, it all starts with the right broker. Clover Trading and Centerpoint Securities have teamed up to supercharge your trading experience by joining Unlock the Power of CP Edge exclusively with Centerpoint. We're talking top-tier trading tools worth over $6,000 all at your fingertips. Get ahead with real-time scanners, cutting-edge news, and a tailor-made trading journal. Experience trading like never before with superior short inventory, personalized support, and interest on your idle funds. Plus, you can get competitive pricing that fits your trading style. Ready to elevate your trading game? Click the Clover trading link in the description below to get exclusive deals with Centerpoint Securities. Now let's get back to the content. On this breakout here, it actually broke out the week before I left for this cruise. And I actually bought this breakout right over 149. I did buy this breakout. It went as high as 157, and unfortunately it died. And again, I was traveling this day, or I knew I was traveling the next day. I didn't really want to manage the trade while flying. I've never been a fan of that. I'll, I'll trade you know, while I'm traveling, but oh, and on a plane, I've done it before, and it's worked out pretty well for me, but I, I, I just didn't want to do it this time around. And so I actually sold on this red day. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to swing it in case the, the trade took out longer than expected. And that's kind of what happened. It took three more days before it actually started breaking out again over the 158 level. Now, thankfully for me, when when it broke out again, this was on the 18th. I was on the cruise. The cruise was happening. And so because of that, 
I did miss the initial breakout, so to speak, over 158. So I ended up buying in the 160s, right? If we look at like the trade here, this one right here, I started getting on an, a dip. Obviously, if I wasn't traveling, if I wasn't on the cruise, I probably would have been buying the breakout here over the 158s and 160 level. But nonetheless, I still thought this was going to go two bucks. That was kind of the goal for me here. And so I did get in on this dip. Okay, added a little bit more into the close. We close at 166. Next day, it actually panics. It has a little dip. This wick is not a misprint. Okay, but no different than this day, you know, I realized like if I if I just held my position from the original breakout level, I would be up. So when it did dip, I envisioned another day like this. So maybe it dips, maybe it has to consolidate for two or three more days, and then it continued higher. So I was taking a little more of a patience approach, but it was part of my plan if it was going to happen. Did I expect it to? No, I kind of thought it was going to just go right up right away, um, as it has in the previous breakouts, right? But because it didn't, it wasn't too unexpected. Okay. And so at this point, I'm risking, you know, the lows of 148 here on this day that it broke out again. By the time it closed, it it wicks super hard right back to the highs of the day. Okay. Which then lead to the next day of it running and going up and then the next day of running and going up. And then of course the high of here was 199 right below that $2 mark. And the reason why I'm not even showing the intraday is because, you know, if we go into it, I didn't really do anything with the trade, right? I just, I just stayed patient. I stuck in the trade. I had my risk level at 148. I had my positions at 160, 163, 162-ish, you know, in that area. And I just let it work, right? I had my stops in. I went and enjoyed my cruise. I checked it, you know, every every hour or so. I still had my phone up, you know, looking at where, where Fannie Mae was and is. But once it hit, you know, the 190s into $2, I thought to myself, here we go. Like, here it is it. I started selling from my phone into the close. Went nice and sideways right below $2. I thought to myself there was maybe a chance it would go over to the next day. But again, if $2 is my goal, I, I have learned being greedy over time doesn't pay off for me, right? If it's getting even remotely close to my goal, it's better to take it than to try to squeeze out like a water from a rock kind of idea. Yes, sometimes some plays do go higher, but more times than not, I've already caught the meat of the move. I've gone from the 160s now into the 190s on fairly large size. Let's just take it. So I start selling into the close here, especially after it failed the 199 and couldn't get over two. I got the rest out right before the close and locked in over 30 grand. Now, you might ask to make 30 grand, how much was I risking? Well, I had, you know, multiple five figures worth of shares. If we go into where I bought it again. What was it? The 160s here, right? This dip, we go here. Right, this was the dip I got in on. This was the morning time it panicked and the time it closed was right back to the highs. But again, I'm risking the, you know, the 148 level down here. That's about 10 to 15 cents of risk. I was risking up, or I had in, a, what is it, like 80,000 shares? It's over 10 grand. I was risking you know a five-figure loss. But again, I was willing to do that because I've profited and made money on this ticker so many times that really I'm almost risking profits from the previous breakouts from this one and this one, which I also played. And because it's, again, it's been so reliable, I wanted to give it a, a bigger risk and it worked. Made 30 grand and I'll show you the actual trade here. I'll show you the trades, the actual P&L here. I took it at E-Trade where I made 20 grand and I also took it at center point, which is what you're looking at here for nine grand. So 29 grand total, give or take up plus or minus a few hundred dollars. That was the first trade. And again, that was the easier one. This is the, again, so it was straightforward. Didn't have to think too much about it. Once I bought it and had a risk level set, never even got close to that risk level, sold it when I hit my goal. Very straightforward and simple, okay? The next trade was a little more difficult was SOUN. SOUN was also in the same time frame, right? This day was the 18th, this red day, which was the first day I actually shorted it. And I ended up getting out into this day on the 22nd. So it took me the whole week this time, whereas Fannie Mae took me only up till Thursday on the 21st. However, SOUN was much, much choppier. And in my personal opinion, was a much lower odds of working. It was still high odds. But Fannie Mae, I almost felt certain, you know, nothing is certain in the market, but I felt very confident about it. SOU, and there were many times where I thought I might have to stop out. In fact, one time I did. Let's look at the thesis, right? So Fannie Mae has a very consistency of breaking out. Why on earth did I think SOUN here was going to break down? Well, SOUN is an AI company. SOUN has ran from two pretty much to 10, all because they are part of the AI sector, right? If you've been looking at NVIDIA's chart, NVIDIA has been going absolutely nuts. You know, NVIDIA is kind of like the, the, the father of the AI kind of sector has gone from the hundreds to 200s all the way up to a thousand or not high 900s. So on this epic, epic run, anything that's been related to NVIDIA has also gotten some attention. SOUN is one of those tickers. SOUN or NVIDIA owns shares of SOUN. SUN gave NVIDIA shares from an offering they did together back in 2017. The point is though, that's not a big deal to me. I never thought that was big news, but of course the marketplace thought different because again, it's not that many shares that NVIDIA owns. And frankly, it was from an offering. It's like NVIDIA owns the shares by default because they just helped SOUN out, okay? And they haven't done anything with those shares. They technically still own them. So SOUN got a lot of attention from that, which caused this gap up. 
okay, from two to four. High threes. Traded sideways, consolidated for a few days, and then broke out. Had a huge run from four to seven, pulled back, and then here we are on another run from five to 10. From a fundamental standpoint, well, one, technically it's over, it's overextended. But from a fundamental standpoint, how much they make in earnings and revenue to what they are at a multi-billion dollar valuation, it doesn't add up. There's going to be some kind of pullbacks involved. This is only really up on mostly AI, NVIDIA hype, in my opinion. And so I thought the kind of the extra air in this bubble, so to speak, was going to kind of going to come out from out of it. And I was looking at this run here to play out similar to last run. OK, it pretty much had kind of one to two big green days and then a sell off. This one had one big green day and a sell off. Nonetheless, had two red days or one red or I guess one red day technically, and then a bounce short made a lower high. Right. And then started its downtrend. Same thing here, had its red day, strong bounce day, technically lower high. And then once we were opening lower below the previous days higher and now making a lower low or a lower high, I should say, that was confirmation for me that I want to get in short, looking for a fade over two or three, four days back down into the sixes, maybe even the fives. No different than here, going from the sevens down into the low fives, almost actually sub five for a day or two. So if we go in to the 18th here, let's go into the chart. Let's go to like a two minute. This is the first lower high, right? This is the strong green candle move that it had after kind of dying off and selling off. Okay. But the next day when it opens up below that high and actually starts panicking, right? If we zoom in a little more here, it starts to panic right out the way. You know, this for me was bearish, right? This is now setting that first lower high trend to start that downtrend, very similar to the downtrend that happened a couple weeks ago. And so I got short up in here. I remember thinking I'm starting in on these bounces. Um, I believe I might have gotten one more ad up here before it really died, but it died really well. Again, it went from the high eights down to sub eight, right? Just in the high sevens for, for the first day. And so I thought to myself, this is great. This is a great start. I'm going to hold this short. It's going to break down in the 750s level. Again, it's actually double top bottomed here, right? This 750 area here and then here going to break down that 750 area and we're going to see sub seven and then the sixes. Now, unfortunately, in after hours, the company PR and they PR about the NVIDIA news. Now, the reality is the NVIDIA news is old, right? We didn't we already had that happen. And so unfortunately, in that moment, I actually didn't know that I didn't look at close enough at the PR to see that it was just a rep, a repeat PR of what it, they already said a month ago. And so I covered I, you know, again, my average was like eight, 890, 885, somewhere in here. And I covered for a practically break even. It sucked because I was up over a dollar a share at the lowest, right? So to be up over a dollar a share on 10,000 shares to then covering a break even, it sucks. But it is what it is. I didn't want to see this thing gap up in pre-market the next day and then be turned into a loser. So at the very minimum, I got out for a very small gain, if not break even. It was, it was like, yeah, a couple hundred buck trade. I'd rather protect myself than be sorry. Safe than sorry, right? Overnight, I then discovered that PR was just a repeat of the PR from a month ago. I found that information out. And of course, it made sense. By the time it came out and the market opened the next day, it was it gave all that, all the PRs and kind of gains and after hours, it gave it all back in pre-market. So when that happened, I got a little bit frustrated. I was like, dang it, I should still be short from that original average. And I questioned, should I chase? Should I get in? Should I follow through on this? And again, this is when I'm on the cruise at my desk throughout the market open. I decide, yes, I'm going to. So this is the first one. I do decide to actually get st short pre-market and add near the market or near once the market opens. And so unfortunately, at this point, I have like a low eights average. Again, most of my shares were taken right here. And I said to myself, you know, yes, I should have an 890s average or 890. And now I have like an eight average, 90 cents below. But the thesis is still intact. OK, unfortunately, again, I go off my cruise. I go enjoy myself. I check for my phone every now and then. And unfortunately, I see I got stopped out on the stop loss I had not stopped out for full, but a portion of my size on red green. Because again, I was a little bit too aggressive on this ad, this last ad here that I knew if this went green, I don't need to stay in full size. I need to I need to risk the original size on the previous highs, which was now the nines here, right? 910 to 930 ish. I knew covering red green was not the only trade invalidating action you could see. And then I thought about it some more and I thought to myself, you know what, if we're going to risk the whole trade on the high nines, I need to be full size from that get go, right? I can't be trying to pick different levels and risk some here and some there, half my size on this level, another quarter size on this level. It's like the full size needs to be on one level and just trust it and enjoy my, my vacation, right? So to speak. And so I added back that same size, accepted the bigger risk in general, which again was similar to the Fannie Mae size, about 10K risk if I was going to be wrong. And I let the trade work. I put my stop in order at, at in, the, in the low nines. It got as high as 880, which is a little bit close. Again, why it was a little bit lower odds than Fannie Mae. I got, I got close to stopping out at times. But again, I let the stop loss just sit there. I enjoyed my time, checked on my phone every now and then, 
and it actually died into the close and closed around my average. Again, I was still down a little bit, a few cents, right? We let the trade continue to work. And every day, if you notice, it has some kind of morning strength. This day was a weak day, but obviously the PR came back and failed. Strong day where I stopped out, but then re-added and it failed. Next day, another strong spike, but also failed again. And then you'll notice every spike is lower. It keeps on making lower highs, okay? Not to mention, it actually broke down that 750 area right here. This is where things got a little bit tricky because I actually added on the 750 breakdown, right? Again, I'm looking, I'm, I remember seeing this action from my phone. It's now triple bottomed here, here, and here. So when it broke, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is the key breakdown. I need to add to my short position. But yeah, so when it broke down here, I added. I added like a fourth more onto my position. And unfortunately, again, if you look at what happened here, it ricocheted right back. Not only did it go back even more, went right back into the low eights where my average was. In fact, because I added, my average is now like 790. So again, I'm from being up almost 50 plus cents, I'm now down again. The good part is, is because again, if we go to the daily chart, because every day it hit, it hit set new lower highs, I was able to update my trade plan. And instead of risking the low nines, like from these highs, I can now risk the high of 875, right? Because that's a new lower high. And as long as it was keeping this downtrend on the daily chart, eventually it's gonna be enough pressure for it to break down that 750 area. So yes, unfortunately I added, but I can now risk 875 a little from the previous day. So when that happens, because I added, and even though it ricocheted back, it sucks because I don't want to be a part, you know, it's not a good average to be a part of or to get a good ad to be a part of, but my trade plan is still intact. Until it breaks a new kind of higher high and changes the trend, you know, we're going to stay in the trade. And so that's exactly what happened the next day. Another strong spike didn't break over this 855 level, which was getting the previous day's high then. And what do you know? it finally breaks down, it collapses. Next time it touches 850s, there is no ricochet, there is no savior to save it back, right? It starts collapsing. I didn't even see the breakdown. Again, I was off enjoying myself. By the time I checked my phone, it was back down to the low sevens. I'm like, sweet, we're working, we're still in the trade. Stop losses are in, things are going great. By the time I got to my computer back later in the day, I saw it in after I was down to the low sixes and I was like, holy crap, six is my goal. I should probably start taking some off as we get closer to six. And so that's why you see this cover, I cover about a half my size in the 630s right here. I think exactly at 630. Awesome fade. Beautiful breakdown. Again, if we go to the daily chart, it supported six or it supported 750 so many times until it didn't and it collapsed. Next day it gapped down into the low sixes, and that is where I covered the rest, you know, at 615. And I'll tell you why. Broke down tremendously, covered some at the 630 level in after hours. Once it got into the next day here, we did a small morning spike into the 640 level, but then made a new low a day below 612. Okay. It didn't really go much lower and it started supporting six on this day right here. At some point, it was either here or here. I said to myself, if this holds six, I don't want to overstay my welcome and get caught in on a bounce. So I did cover the rest at 615, somewhere in one. It was either here or here. Of course, it ends up actually going barely sub six. And then later in the day, actually ends up going to six or to 585 here on this little breakdown. But again, my goal is six. I'm having average cover like 622 now. It's not a big deal. Either way, I still locked in 30 grand. Again, if you look at here, S-O-U-N. 33 gray, 32,754 bucks and 57 cents to be exact. So those are the two trades. As of now, you know, SOUN is still kind of where I covered for the most part in the sixes to low sixes. So I haven't really missed out on much in terms of it going lower, but those are the two trades, right? One was on Thursday, Fannie Mae, this breakdown and then covering on a Friday on the 22nd is when the cruise ended. I actually got off the cruise, was Ubering from my phone when I covered the rest of this trade. And that's that, you know, again, for me taking a very relaxed approach, sipping a margarita um, every other day or about every day, really on this cruise, I was given two great opportunities, a breakout and a breakdown. Both resulted in close to 30K in gains, one little bit over, one little bit under. And so you add those up, it's a 60K week for me plus. So yeah, that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want more uh, traveling and trading videos like this, maybe I'll just have to get out and see the world a little more. I definitely want to do another cruise after that. It was a lot of fun. I'm getting Wi-Fi was great. Hopefully I'll do it again soon. Thanks so much guys. Peace.